talk today about online learning in the time of coronavirus. Now, this is an interesting space for us uh, because we've been doing training for a long time and it has been primarily online. Uh, but I think this situation that we face now is, is really very different. What we see now, I think, is a very different world. And I was joking to someone earlier in the morning that now I know what it feels like to be in a zombie movie. Right? But certainly, I think uh, we are seeing a range of reactions. Uh, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, there's a lot of questions around how do we, where do we go from here? What next? How do businesses plan for uh, yeah. this sort of yeah. scenario? And I think uh, it's uh, the situation this time is a little different because uh, given the nature of the disease, uh, everyone feels that it's uh, it's going to be harder to contain this, uh, which means that uh, a lot of the doomsday scenarios, uh, worst case scenarios where people are talking about more than half the world getting infected are actually looking a bit more realistic now than in uh, some of the previous situations. So I think this is uh, definitely something that uh, we will have to learn to live with. Uh, this is not something uh, that is going to go away. It's not like a tsunami, you know, we, um, <clears throat> we feel the impact for a couple of weeks and then we start uh, going back to normal. Uh, I think this is something that will stay with us for a fairly long uh, period of time and uh, therefore there will be a new normal that we go back to. Yeah, And I, we see that in many of our conversations. Uh, as a learning organization, you know, we have students who come and enroll in our programs and uh, some of them are fairly long term. Uh, we offer a lot of training programs to our enterprise customers. And across the board, there are so many different conversations now around, you know, how do these programs continue? How does learning continue? when we are in the age of social distancing, uh, when there is a lot of uncertainty around where people are actually going to be one week or two weeks or three weeks from now. And uh, certainly there's been, I think, a spate of cancellations. There's been a lot of requests for reorganization of the training programs and definitely a lot of requests for how can we do this online so that there is minimal disruption. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think online uh, learning thankfully is uh, is a concept that uh, that has been around for uh, for some time uh, the primary idea behind online learning was to break down geographical barriers so making uh, education more accessible to people um, where it normally wouldn't be and uh, i think now there is a different reason uh, for uh, us leveraging technology in education but uh, because we uh, we are so used to doing this uh, over the last 10 years, um, I think uh, the transition is going to be easier. If you remember when we started Jigsaw Academy, um, you know, the biggest question that all our students asked us was, uh, can I even learn this online? Is uh, something as complex as analytics, is that a subject that can even be learned online? And then Coursera came and then uh, now most of our students have done one, two or uh, more than two courses on Coursera. And therefore, we hardly ever get this question of whether online learning is possible. So I think in the professional learning space, uh, people and companies have already been leveraging technology uh, to a great extent. Uh, but I think this is going to be forced upon uh, universities, colleges and schools now at a much faster pace. Yeah, I think that definitely is a huge difference. The audience now for online learning has suddenly expanded quite dramatically. And uh, kids as young as let's say in grade 5 or grade 6 are looking at potentially 4 to 5 weeks of you know their entire days being online. And uh, that certainly requires, uh, you know, uh, while I think the technology exists, I think there is some design and thinking that now needs to go in. So I think the, the, the point that, that, I, that comes home to me very strongly is the, the systems and the tech exist, but definitely some design and thought has to go into this in quite, a, quite, uh, quite a bit for uh, audiences that are not used to this uh, online learning. Yes, and again, I think this is something that we'll not have to start from scratch. So uh, during, during its early days, EdTech was very focused on how do we put the right technology, the right platform in place so students can have a seamless experience. Um, over time, Coursera, MOOCs and uh, you know, our experience with other large platforms has led us to believe that uh, the completion rates or the engagement rates in online learning are usually lower than what they are in face-to-face -face learning. And uh, so already in the last few years, there has been a lot of thought that is going into how do you keep your audience engaged. 
of course that thought has primarily been around how do you keep a professional audience mm. uh, engaged mm. now we'll have to talk about class 5 class 6 students how do you keep them engaged and that's a, a very different uh, ball game right and and just one very quick point about the professional learning space uh, i agree with you that a lot of thought has gone in into sort of engagement but i think the fundamental shift that we are seeing now is that online learning is not just a uh, you know like an add on to a learning program uh, and it is not i don't think it's at a stage where you know we can say it's a clear substitute for any face to face program um, i think uh, you know people that are exploring the idea of uh, not having disruption in training uh, through online learning programs do have to think about how do they achieve the same objectives in a learning program and therefore what that design needs to be i think that needs to be thought through quite carefully it is not an apples to apples uh, you know substitution oh, at all yeah definitely definitely so when large it companies um, come to us and they say we have to uh, train uh, 3000 students um, and uh, because of the scale uh, their uh, you know face to face learning is not an option so we have uh, designed programs we have delivered them successfully for 3000 5000 college students Uh, learning on our uh, online platforms and doing that very successfully but uh, again there uh, you know the primary motive behind learning is to make sure that they get a job in a cognizant or an infosys after this which is guaranteed uh, once they clear the uh, the program so there is a very clear motivation for these guys to actually sit through the program and complete it and um, uh, that makes uh, makes it easier for uh, uh, for everyone to keep the audience uh, engaged to keep the students engaged how do you do that in a school or a university scenario i think uh, teachers will have to come up with uh, with similar ways where uh, there is a strong incentive for uh, uh, for uh, college students or school students to learn now of course uh, you know I like the idea of learning and the tech but we know what the reality is in India we have i think a fair amount of infrastructure issues our internet connectivity is not fantastic and one of the thing that does worry me about this is while the opportunity is there you know will we really be able to take advantage of it and are we sort of underestimating the complications of moving all of this learning online I think the infrastructure challenges are definitely there the infrastructure is all already quite loaded and uh, with more and more people getting online now either to work from home or study from home the infrastructure is going to get loaded even further um, but i think uh, right now we have to focus more on the positives that uh, online learning brings and uh, that is something um, i don't see many people touching upon um, i think online learning can be very effective it um, it always uh, you know um, helps in terms of the flexibility that it provides to the learner the uh, learners can study at any time they can schedule their uh, learning according to their uh, um, you know their daily timetable um, there is also in a city like bangalore the fact that you can cut down on your commute time extensively uh, by learning from home um, and even uh, you know uh, even uh, engagement in the class i know teachers are going to find it hard to keep the audience engaged especially the younger audience but i think once they figure out how to keep their students engaged they will find that the quality of learning can uh, even be better than physical classes i think what is not as clear is how do we make sure that uh, you know these learning online learning is enabled correctly for different kinds of audiences that there's been some thought in uh, you know figuring out the learning outcomes and therefore the design of this online learning journeys are aligned to those outcomes and i think that's where L&D professionals and you know people like us who are in the online learning space have to put in thought and really work uh, you know with these different scenarios. Definitely, definitely. I think uh, a lot of thought has to go into it to make it more structured and to uh, make it uh, make it more scalable. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> I think there are uh, different uh, different spaces within the education field uh, which have. Uh, which have uh, taken a slightly different approach to leveraging technology and therefore there are uh, certain education spaces like professional education upskilling reskilling etc which have adopted mm. technology to a far greater extent than uh, some of our uh, schools and classroom yes. setups yes and um, i think uh, now colleges schools universities they all have to take the lead from uh professional education as to how to leverage technology there is no point in reinventing the wheel 
so so who do you think people should be talking to uh, you know when it comes to sort of starting on this journey um, you know we have professional learners in enterprise uh, you know uh, companies and then we have the university audience the school audience uh, you know so how do how does one even get started on this on this conversation um, i think for the professional learners it's a little easier uh, you know certainly large you know, all kinds of companies large and small have access to online learning systems now um, and there is some familiarity uh, so i think it's really just uh, ability to identify you know what you want to learn and sort of figure out uh, which right. of that material you have access to um, and maybe that's a little easier but i think for the university and school audience it's going to be a tougher conversation i, I think actually it may be easier and faster for universities and colleges because uh, there was no uh, there was no pressing need for Uh, for professional education to adopt technology other than the fact that uh, you know there were some geographical barriers and sometimes mm-hmm. scale became an issue uh, but uh, there are very very strong constraints that face schools and universities today they don't have any other option mm-hmm. they have to adopt technology so i think they will be forced to adopt technology at a much faster pace than mm-hmm. uh, than it came in professional education mm-hmm. and i think uh, that because uh, because the circumstances are such we will probably see people getting a lot more comfortable with online education in the next 3 to 6 months um, you know a much faster rate of adoption than uh, say coursera which also took 2 to 3 years to pick up steam yeah, yeah i think we we've, we've been speaking to universities and offering our platform as well as our content to them so they can leverage it to uh, make sure that uh, their students are uh, doing some learning during this time uh we've been making similar offers to corporates as well in fact uh, we've made some con- some of our content free for uh for some corporates so that their uh, employees can uh, can learn for free i've seen some of the other edtech companies do the same so i think uh, people are and companies are coming together to bridge this gap i think uh, those who are uh, slightly behind in the uh, on the adoption curve need to reach out to people who are ahead and uh, make sure they are able to leverage their learnings as much as possible So so what do you think is going to be the big impact of coronavirus you know there i think there is uh, certainly lots of immediate changes that we are seeing but in your mind what do you think would be the big impact i i think based on all the literature that i have read so far i think coronavirus is here to stay with us it's not uh, a one time phenomena it's not something that will go away in a, in a couple of weeks or even a couple of months i think it may subside as weather changes but then it will probably come back again next year and uh, so it is something that we will all have to learn to live with um, and uh, if you if you look at the last 10 years uh, you know corona virus is not an isolated mm. incident there yes. have been sars there has been h1n1 mm. there has been swine flu and uh, so many other uh, new uh, diseases that have come in so i think uh, social distancing and some of the other measures that we are taking now Uh, are going to become the norm in the future mm. which means that uh, even in education there'll be a deep impact of this and uh, i think uh, all the uh, all the people who are uh, learning now who will learn in the next uh, few years they will be leveraging technology a lot more uh, than uh, people who were learning till now mm. so i think there'll be a there'll be a uh, forced abrupt shift uh, towards online learning uh, over the next few months mm. I agree with you I think uh, you know coronavirus is one example but we are in a increasingly connected world and uh, we will have more and more of these possible uh, pandemic type situations and I really think that the way we learn including our university system our classrooms you know four year or three year university programs um, I don't think that that is going to continue I think we are uh, you know we, we we are probably going to have to design new ways of learning uh, and they are going to be shorter i think we are going to see a lot more micro credentials i think there's going to be a lot of just in time learning and i think there will be a lot of focus on how do you make the learning process sustainable at scale you know for people that are in very very you know different locations i really think that we may be at an inflection point and maybe the traditional university system degrees etc is probably not going to uh, persist for much longer I agree with you I think uh, corona virus is uh, is another problem uh, that uh, that the humanity faces on top of uh, things like uh, climate change and uh, some of the other issues that we are uh, grappling with and uh, I think uh, just like the other issues I'm sure we will find uh, ways to surmount this and uh, some of them may uh, 
may involve coming up with some very interesting innovations in the uh, space of online learning and uh, curious. i'm curious to see how uh, how this develops so fingers crossed hopefully the uh, the coronavirus epidemic will subside soon uh, but uh, at the same time let's prepare for the worst stay safe everyone